two people in a boat needing to row together unless they have a similar approach, a similar background, similar training, you may find it a little bit of a learning experience to get it together. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, Day 3 of Pukode, Appointments or Accountings. We are still in Exodus or Shemot chapter 38 today, one verse, verse 27. And the hundred talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the set-apart place and the basis of the veil, 100 sockets for the 100 talents, a talent for each socket. So there is this accounting of a large amount of silver. A talent is roughly 75 pounds. 100 uh, talents is 7,500 pounds then. So if 100 talents make 100 sockets, then we should understand that each socket was about 75 pounds of silver. And I say about because, well, a talent to pounds depends on who you listen to as to the exact equation. And so these silver sockets were designed so that the boards that comprise the walls of the Mishkan or tabernacle would have a solid foundation on the desert floor to be seated According to, I believe, Rashi's understanding, a socket had two holes in it. Each board and its design, as it came down to the bottom, it had two pinions. And so you would have the pinion of one side in a socket and the pinion on the other side in a socket. It was seated then on two sockets, but only on one end of each socket. Every board shared a socket with another board, is what I'm trying to say. And that was by design. Silver is symbolic of our redemption. What this may be saying to us then is that our redemption story, though different, is nevertheless a shared experience. Uh, I've known some folks that had dramatic testimonies of how that they were delivered from great bondages, great addictions, horrible life circumstances. They came out of traumas and all sorts of colorful uh, storyline inclusions, and people sit in the pews with their mouth hung open, and they're riveted to every little detail. And it's almost at times, not intentionally so, I don't believe, but at times we seem to glory the sin life more so than the redemption aspect of it. The one who is sharing about all of the things in their past, uh, they are, they're glorying in the fact, I don't live that way anymore. Thank you, Father, I've been delivered from all that. But for folks that have never really experienced life in those scales and in those understandings, it's like for the first time they're getting to hear what a sin life might really be about. And so someone also sitting in the pew that has never really had gone into life experiences of a great sinful nature they may feel like, well, my salvation experience just doesn't compare. But that's not really true. There are those that have come out, as I said, from all sorts of traumas and addictions and dark issues of life. You may be one that always turns your homework in on time. Maybe even always got an A. You always brushed your teeth, you cleaned your plate, you never even had a cowlick in your hair. You were just someone that had a straight-laced, upright, keep it within the boundaries, maybe even going to church or 
some kind of congregational setting on a regular basis. You could quote verses. You could sing the songs. But if I'm, to hear me correctly in this, if you've never known Yeshua to be Yeshua ben Elohim, he is the son of the Most High. He is my Redeemer. He is the Messiah. And I acknowledge that I need his atoning redemption for me and my sins. Your life may have been picture perfect by comparison to many, but you're still carrying the sin debt that goes all the way back to the garden. It indeed is a very dangerous person who believes that their sin nature, their unredeemed sin nature, can be trusted to live an upright and morally correct life without effort. It's hard enough for some folks who have been born again and been delivered from whatever their past has been. It's hard enough for some of them to continue to stay free from whatever has plagued them and getting past their past. It's a struggle, and they have to wrestle consistently, constantly, to maintain an upright and righteous walk. For someone else to say, but I've really done, done anything wrong, I don't really have any stories to tell, my testimony is bland by comparison. If you've never even been born again, however, the unredeemed nature of a dom that is still in you it is like a ravening wolf. It is as dangerous as a frenzied bear on a hunt. It's hibernating. It's just lurking beneath the surface. And you can't trust that it's not going to leap forward at some moment of provocation and cause destruction to yourself and to those that are around you. No matter who you are and what your past consists of, consist of, we all equally share in the need of redemption. Therefore, one who has lived a straight-laced life and one who's lived a terrible life, once redeemed, we're in the same sockets together because the same price was paid for us all. The same effort on Yeshua's part to reconcile us back to the Father is equal to all of us, regardless of what level of depravity that we have experienced. And so we are seated together in these silver sockets of redemption to stand side by side and to form the structure of the house of the Most High. When we talk about the, the structure, we might think about all of those that are included in the body of Messiah. And that's one level of application. I see a second level, and that is that the structure may also refer then to those who are leaders in the house of the Most High. That is, the ones who provide the stability and the structure, the girding, the guidance, the walls of protection, the walls of identification for the rest of the body. The body is important. The leadership is important. In regards then to the leadership, what we have oftentimes is leaders saying, don't put me in the same socket as that one. I don't want to be next to them. But it is the builder of the house. It is the one for whom the house is constructed and to whom the house gives honor and glory to that decides which board goes next to which board. So we must allow ourselves to understand that Yah very often will put us next to someone that disagrees with us. Or we with them, so that we learn to stand together as again the same effort of Messiah to redeem us was for one as it was for the other. Let no one boast, let no one elevate themselves over anyone else. 
because in Messiah Yeshua, we all stand equal and we all share the same story. Until tomorrow, Shalom. Shalom.